Hey, what's up? Daniel West here from danielwest.co.za and welcome to another exciting tutorial where we will create some rain. Yes, you've heard it right. If you shot something on location or in studio and you want that rainy dramatic feel, do not worry, Photoshop can do it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Photoshop can create some rain and that is exactly what we'll be doing. So, here is our photograph that we've done already. And as you can see, it's nice and dramatic. There's a um, little bit of rain falling from the side and it is beautiful. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So hopefully this will help you create that moody feel that you really would like for your own photograph. So here, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm just gonna switch off my rainy effect. So we've got a photograph, it's been shot in studio. Um, this is actually for a client. I'm not gonna show you guys how to create the background. That's in another tutorial. But what I'm gonna do is just show you guys how to create the rain. So with the first thing that I would do is create a new layer, Command Shift and N. Just call this rain. Nice and easy and just say, okay, we leave it on the color on none. You can actually create it on a gray. Uh, but I'm just going to show you the steps as we take if you do not go through here. So if with the no none selected, we just go down to mode, we keep it on normal, and opacity also 100%. Say okay. Now, inside of here, on a foreground, we are going to create a 50% gray. So you want everything to be 0, 0, 0, 0, and the K to be 50%. Or you can actually copy this, 929496. All right, and uh, we say, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fill, ach, the paint bucket, and we're just gonna click on it with opacity of 100, Oops, and we've got a completely 50% gray um, like layer. So once we've got that, we're gonna go to filter, noise, we're gonna add some noise, and now the fun part over here is, usually it starts around like 0% or whatever, um, you can choose any one of Uniform or Gaussian. Uh, I like to use Gaussian. It gives a little bit more of a uh, unreal, well, a natural feel in terms of it catches the noise a little bit more. If you go with Uniform, it's, well, obviously a much more uniformed. Um, for rain, I like to go above anything above 150%, um, 180, 178, anything. We will select Monochrome because we wanted to have black and white, that way we can have it on screen a little bit further down. All right, so monochromatic selected, and we say, okay, great. So there we've got our rain. Yes, you can see it, it's rain, right? Yeah, 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 no, okay. There's still a little bit more of things that we need to do. So without further ado, let's go to filter. We go to blur, and we go to motion blur. Yes, all right. Now here you can select your angle, we can go 45, if it's really strong wind we go 90, you know, like just coming down is normal, 0% um, is sideways obviously, and so on. So what we want to do is we go to about anything 55, even give a nice angle, that way our rain is coming from the left, no, from the right to the left, otherwise if you want it to go left to right, you just go minus 45 or 54 or whatever you like to have your value. I like 72 actually. Hmm. All right, so let's just go to 65. We go down to 72. There we go. All right, now the distance. Zero. One is not going to do anything really intense unless you go and zoom in. Then you can actually see it moved a pixel. But that is not what we want to do. We want to make it nice and long, there we go, so we go about 144, that would be fine, say okay, and there we've got our rainy effect, so we're going to put this, the mode with our layer selected, we've got to put our mode to screen, yes, it's starting to look like something, <laughs> still a long way to go, all right, then in our adjustments layer, we're going to go to curves, you can even go down over here and select curves. Oops. Great. Now, with Alt selected, you go in between the two layers and this little pop-up thingy will come up 
and you just click it that way we parent this then it only affects the layer and that is exactly what we want so now the thing the trick is over here to make it a little bit more realistic is to click on it create two two points for you all right and the bottom one you are actually going to take it down till you don't see much white anymore the further you take it down the less rain you're going to have the more you take it up the more rain you're going to have so you got to play around with it now the white one why i've made it there is i'm just going to create it just going to push a little bit more that i can see more white coming through all right so just slightly down there we go great that's looking good all right now the effect you can't really see as much and you've got these weird white lines going on at the bottom not so weird that is actually the blur that creates that so how we get around it is you select your rain layer command T for transform hold down alt shift and just drag it slightly up that it you know that it gets out of the way um, I like to make it nice and big so that the raindrops are nice and close. Double click to say OK, or you can even just checkbox it. And there we go. We've got our first layer of rain going nicely. Great. So just double clicking on the curves and then we can just slightly tweak that. Great. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select with holding down shift, select both rain and the curves, and I'm going to go command and J to duplicate it. This way you can actually see it actually becomes more prominent. I kind of like that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go command J again, but this time with this one, I'm going to go command T to transform it. And I'm going to go and create smaller particles with alt shift down. There we go. Right around there. But now there is way too much noise going on, way too much um, like rainy effect that is happening over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my curves and put it down slightly. More up, more white, more down. More. Yeah, so I'm just going to play around with that slightly, slightly. And also with this one, it doesn't become so prominent. Great, that's looking good. All right, select all of your layers just to keep it nice and neat. Um, all your rainy layers and command G to group them and call it rain. There we go. And that's it. So there you have it. That is our rainy effect that's happening. You can actually, if you want to go even more detail, you can create some splashes and stuff just like that using stock footage or even just go painting in on another layer with your brush tool. Uh, I like to use this one. Any one of these would be nice. It's a little bit of a scatter. Make it nice and biggish. And just click, 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 click. Dish, dish. It works nice with the, nicer with the, um, with Wacom pen or any type of pen, but I like Wacom. I like Wacom, yes. Wacom pins are nice and it works very, very cool. All right, so just create that slightly down with the opacity and create a new layer. Uh, slightly more out and a bigger splashy feeling and just click away. Once again, remember, you got to keep reality in check, like just keep an eye on what seems real, what doesn't seem real, okay? Like for instance, whatever is happening down there is not real. It doesn't feel real. So I just go back and do 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 do. There we go. Ah, come on. There we go. There we go. Capacity down and shot. So now you have those splashes going on. 
<clears throat> well, there you have it. The rainy effect using Photoshop and nothing but what the filters inside of Photoshop. Yes. If you like the video, please subscribe and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.